welcome to Grizzly Knits, episode 30. I'm back. I know, it's a surprise. It's, uh, it's shocking. <laughs> but here I am. It's been a really, really long time. I do apologize for that. Um, really, just everything was just going on. Some health issues, um, family issues. Everything's good now, though. And I just couldn't get my head in the game. But I did, I have been knitting up a storm. If you follow my Instagram, you'll, you'll know that. And today I just woke up and I thought, you know, I really miss everybody. I've been getting some really sweet messages um, that you miss, you miss me too, which was so nice to hear. And I thought, why not? I have a ton of stuff to talk about and show you. And yeah, so get comfortable. Um, and did I even say who I was? I don't know. I don't even know how to do this anymore. I'm Grizzly Knits. I'm Tracy coming to you from Toronto, Canada. You can find me on Instagram as Grizzly Knits and on Ravelry as Grizzly Knits. And yeah, that's where I am. Um, so uh, there's just so much. I don't even know where to begin. Why don't we'll just begin at the beginning. What am I wearing? I am wearing now I'm going to I'm going to be popping on glasses because my eyesight is getting a little uh, showing my age, let's just say. Um, but I have been keeping a book where I've been writing everything down. I've been pretty good with that. So the first thing I'm wearing, well, the first thing I want to talk about is my super Simple Summer Sweater by Hokey Locatelli. I'm going to stand up and just give you a little tour of it. And honestly, I love this sweater so much. It, it was incredible to knit. It was, um, it just fits so well. Like, I, I don't even know if, I've, if I have a sweater that fits this well. So... What did I make it in? Okay, so I got this yarn um, quite a long time ago. Now this is not the color. I used up all this, but I have three balls of gray and I was gonna incorporate the gray and then I decided not to do it. Um, but this is Barocco Remix. It's a really affordable yarn. Um, and it's got like, Honestly, nylon, cotton, acrylic, silk, linen, it's got everything in it because it's a recycled fiber. Um, in the ball, it's like kind of soft, but not nothing I was too excited about. So I thought I'm just going to make a sweater and then we'll block it and wash it and see what happens. And it came out so soft. Now I love this yarn. Really, really soft. So it is a simple construction, um, just ra raglan, I think it's raglan decrease, uh, increases, but it's got like the cutest little like slit at the sides. And honestly, this is that kind of pattern where you could just, you, you know, like design your own things, put your own things into it. It doesn't have to be striped. Um, anyway, I really loved it. So I made that, oh, and I have to tell you guys something very interesting. I work on one project at a time now. I know it's crazy. So what was happening while like my life felt a little chaotic, um, my knitting was feeling chaotic. So I had like usually around five or six projects on the go. And every day I'd say, okay, I'm going to do like two rows of this and three rows of this and I was just feeling really overwhelmed and I started getting jealous of people who do one project at a time. And I thought, could that be my life? I don't know. So I thought I'm going to try it and see if I like it. And if I don't like it, Hey, I can cast on everything. Um, and, I, and this is not a judgment of people who have lots of whips going. You just have to feel good about whatever you're doing. Um, so, and I, like I said, I thought I'd give it a try and just see. Well, I love it. It's crazy. I get so much more finished. Well, obviously you get more finished. I'm doing just as much knitting, but I think because I'm focused on one thing, I, I'm like, things are just getting finished. 
And then when you get that feeling like you want to cast something on, I usually just come in my craft room and kind of like plan my next project and say, okay, well, when you're done this, then this is going to start. And I don't know, it's working. It might not always work. Like I could come back to you in a couple of weeks and say, yeah, no, I have like 10 things casted on. I don't know. But for now, we're going to give it a try and I, I'm loving it. So I've made, so what I'm going to show you is not just like in a couple of weeks. I mean, I don't think I have podcasted since December. So a huge chunk of time. Um, and I'm not even showing you everything because I can't even remember some things were gifts and whatever, but this is one thing. Now let's see what else I have to show you. Um, I think, okay, I did a couple of dishcloths. So I was doing, let me get the patterns. I was doing my normal dishcloths that I normally do. And I was watching my good friend, Amy, on Noble Character Crafts, and she was saying how she was trying a different dishcloth pattern. So this is the normal one. Well, for me, I always do, uh, it's called Traditional Dishcloth, and it's by Stacy Perry of Pinky Knits. And you know, I'll uh, link, link everything down below. Um, will I link it? Or I'll write it, I'll write everything down below that I'm talking about. And this is just in sugars and cream cotton that I had. And I liked it, but Amy was saying how she tried a new pattern and she was really in love with it. So I, of course, wanted to try that. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. And I will link it below. It's kind of hard to find a little bit just because like there's no um, name. Like, a, I don't know who really designed it. It's by the Artisan Carousel Embroidery. That's all I could find but I did find it on Ravelry. So I will make sure you guys have that information. And it is done a little differently. Here's the pattern. This is what it looks like. Um, and I have to say, I love it as well. Now, this one I did first. This is out of Dishy, uh, Knit Picks Dishy. I don't know, I just found it like, I mean, they're not hard to do, but I found it even easier. And I found it even like very even. The sides are, are very even, which I like, like the decreases. Because sometimes when you decrease, it gets a little wonky. So then I, so this was just like the dishy in, oh, what was it called? Oh, I can't remember. Oh, it's called Pebble. This colorway is called Pebble. And then I decided to get fancy and do like, I had this color mist from, color mist cotton from uh, Knit Picks, like a little left. And then I just put it in with the sugars and cream. But what I did, and I made a mistake, was um, I wanted to just float up the colors so I didn't have to keep cutting and adding in. But somehow I missed a few. <laughs> so I've got like a little, like a little loop there, here and there. So this won't be a gift. This will be for me, but it's fine. And now I know what I did wrong. I just have to be a little more um, observant with that. Anyway, I really enjoyed it. I think I go up to 50 stitches. I think the pattern says 60 and I just go up to 50 and that's plenty big for me for, for a dishcloth. Yeah, so got a couple of dishcloths going. Just gonna take a little drink because I haven't done this in a while. Okay, next up, what should we do next? Hmm, okay, I made a hat <laughs> that is my favorite hat now. I love it so much, let me, let me get my hat going. Okay, it is the Barley Hat by Tin Can Knits and it is a free pattern. So it's just a knit and pearls. And I have to show you the fit because it's just, it's amazing. I'm gonna mess up my hair, but you need to see how cute. This is how it looks. And it's warm and I, I honestly wore it every day, like in, in the winter. Um, okay, so I did it on four millimeter and five millimeter needles. 
And the yarn I bought from Pearl Soho years ago, and it's like fancy schmancy yarn. It's like got cashmere in it, but you don't need a lot. So you can kind of, you know, get your best, your best skein of yarn for this. And, um, oh, I just love it. I love the color. I love the fit and it's so soft. And yeah, so because I I work on one thing at a time, I honestly, I had this done and like, it says I started it January 30th and I finished it February 1st. What? So that's really exciting. And like I said, it, it's been my favorite hat. So I made a few other hats for uh, my middle son. Um, I put them on Instagram if you wanna go see them. He went on a trip and one came back, <laughs> but that's okay. Hey, and I learned when you make your, uh, well, I call him my teen, but he is not, he's past teen, he's 20. When you make a 20 year old a hat, don't use good stuff because they will either lose it or they will wash it because they scoop everything up on their floor and put it in their washing machine. So he asked me why a hat I made him look like a doll's hat now, because it's wool. So don't do that. Get your acrylic and use that and everybody's happy. It's my little public service announcement. Okay, what else do we have? Oh, I did another sweater. I made a ranunculus, ranunculus, ranunculus. Ranunculus. Oh, there we go. Didn't love it. <laughs> I'm the only human alive that <laughs> people have made 20, 30. Look at all of them. Um, I don't know. I didn't love it. I, I, ha I made two love notes and I want to make a third. I love that pattern. That pattern is like my heart. So I thought this was like it because everybody loves it. And it's okay. I shouldn't say I didn't like it. It's okay. I had trouble. Um, okay. First of all, let me just show you it. This is it. It's it's very wide, which is not it's not the pattern's fault. I mean, it says it's wide. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna style it yet. So I don't have any uh, finished object pictures. But I had trouble. Um, I did lots wrong. I don't even know what. I did some stitches wrong. Had to go back. Um, it wasn't as clear as I th thought it was going to be. I don't know. It's probably me. I'm sure it's me. But um, I don't, I wouldn't do it again. Um, like I said, I guess you're like of team love note or team ranunculus. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. But anyway. It was okay. It's okay. It's going to be okay. Um, I made it out of Knit Crate yarn. The yarn's gorgeous. It is the Vadalana Dusk. It's a DK. It's got a little alpaca in it. Oh, that does not look like a good color, but... And the colorway name is Brains. So I really... I mean, I might love this when I style it properly it might be really good I wasn't sure of the color but I think it's my color I don't know we'll see not my favorite thing I've made can't love them all but anyway but I did it so I started that March 22nd and finished it April 3rd okay we're we're plowing along let's do some socks um, I made socks in January. I can't, I don't even really remember what. And then I made these socks. These socks were really, really pretty and fun to make. So I wanted to make sure you knew about that, them. Okay. Let me get my pattern. Where are they? Oh, okay. We will show them. Here they are. These are the color palette socks. By Laurel Knits. 
is a paid for pattern worth every penny. They're not as like amazing looking right now because I've worn them quite a bit. So they look, look a little, you've seen better days, but. So they are uh, a scrappy sock. Honestly, you could do whatever you wanted with this pattern. Um, I did it in last year. I got Pip and Pins Mystery subscription every month, uh, which I loved. And it is, um, I put all those colors together and I just found a gray in my stash and I just used that gray to bring it together. But aren't they pretty? I really like them. The pattern is lovely. I did my usual, uh, I knit socks. If you're new here, I knit socks two at a time. 2.25 millimeter needles, either the 16 inch or magic loop. Um, I like both. And uh, I have a small little foot, so I do 56 stitches, always a size small. Anyway, really love them. Um, started those on February 17th and finished them on the 24th. Oh, and speaking of uh, subscription boxes, I got, I have a new one. I stopped all my others. I, I realized about myself, I like having them for a while and then trying something else. So I stopped all mine and I'm getting a new one, but I won't tell you what, um, next, I should have it by next episode and then I can show you and I'm really excited about it. Anyway, so those were great. I enjoyed them making those. Okay. This I, the next thing I loved making so much and I think it was the hardest thing I've ever done. Let me just go grab it. Okay. Oh, I love it so much. I love it. Okay. It, I saw, I was watching, um, Ruth loves to knit. She is a podcaster, um, from, I want to say the South of Wales. I hope I get that right. And I adore this lady. Like she, she's so talented. I love the things she picks. I love the colors, even though like some of them are bright and I wouldn't, I like, I don't gravitate toward them. On her, they look amazing, but she is a beautiful knitter. And I am always drawn to the things that she picks to make. So she made the pressed flower shawl and when I first saw it, I thought, there's no way I, I can make that. I am not skilled enough to do something of that level. But you got to try. And I tried. And look. Isn't it pretty? So when I first saw it, I thought, I don't even know what to do. <laughs> now, these are slip stitches. Look at this. And even the back is kind of pretty, but they're slip stitches and it's so clever. So this, okay, so this is called the uh, Pressed Flower Shawl and it's by Savory Knitting. And look at the bind off. It's an I-cord bind off. I don't even know if I'll ever want to do another bind off. Like it's just perfect. I love it. Um, I started it on February 24th and I finished it on March 7th. I'm telling you these dates because like, that's all I work on. Like this was it, which you'd think, well, how? Like you have, like, don't you want car knitting? Don't you want like easier knitting? But I just, I just w really wanted to focus on one thing at a time. And because I did that, I, I, you, if you can believe it, you memorize this pattern. I don't even know how the brain can do that, but it did. Um, the yarn I used, oh, I did change one thing. The pattern, I went up to a five millimeter needle and I think it asked for a four. I usually go up because I'm a little bit of a tight knitter and I don't mind things a little drapier. Anyway, uh, yarn. Uh, this is from, so the pink is from, I got it at the Knitting Loft and it's Quince & Co. It says Phoebe and the color, oh, here comes the, 
magnifiers, uh, is C Cygnus. I don't know, Cygnus, but it's gorgeous. Oh, and it's this is a DK shawl, and this is just a hundred percent fine merino. So then I wanted to put with it. This is a knit crate, and I thought, oh, I love that. That is pretty. So this is the Audine Wools in the flannel collection. And the color is Buffalo. So I got two, two of these, two of these, and I have tons left, which is nice because both yarns love. This, this blocked so soft. Oh, I love it so much. Okay, that was that. Thank you, Ruth. If you're watching, I don't know if you watch me, but hey, I, uh, it's because of you. <laughs> okay, what else? Oh, I knit a blanket. Now, it has been gifted, but I will put a picture up here or here, whichever my daughter helps me do. Um, and I loved working on it. So I want to just quickly tell you about it in case you need to make a blanket. Um, it's called Mama in a, oh, the, the designer is Mama in a Stitch. And it's called Modern Mountain Throw. And it uses Woolies Thick and Quick. So honestly, I started this blanket March 16th and I finished it March 22nd. An entire blanket. I have bits and pieces left. So um, you could do it all in one color. It takes for the lap size, seven uh, woolies, uh, no, uh, quick and thick. Um, and I think for the full size, 10 or 11. Now I did the lap size and it is big. Like it is plenty big. So I had, I didn't, I had seven odd balls, but they were all neutral colors. So as you can see in the picture, they, they did very, very well. Like they, they really looked good together. And this was, I made for a friend and I gifted that to her and she really loves it. I would do this again in a heartbeat. It was a great pattern and I, I would love to do it all in a solid. I think that would look really pretty. So that was my blanket. Um, I think we're done of things I made. Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to show you my whip, what I'm working on right now, one thing. Um, and then I'm going to show you some things that have come in the mail. Not everything. Cause that would be like, I, it would be excessive <laughs> for three months of not seeing you. I would look like a, I don't know, like I had a problem. But anyway, okay. Oh my goodness, I'm going to mention Ruth loves to knit again. I told you, I'm so, I love her stuff. She showed, uh, I think it was her latest podcast. She showed a non-show, non-show by Casa Pinka. Here it is. It's a paid for pattern. And I never thought about doing a poncho. I don't own a poncho. I don't know. It never occurred to me to make a poncho. But then she showed it and I thought, oh, that's nice. And how great, because when you, like we're going into summer, but there's lots of air conditioning and restaurants and places. And even at night, like at sitting outside with friends and, you're, you're, you can get chilly and wraps are amazing. Shawls are amazing. But how cute would it be to like slip on a poncho? Got me thinking. So this pattern comes when you buy it, you get two different, pa two different, uh, weights. So this is the nacho light and then there's the DK. So I didn't have enough yarn, if you could believe that for a DK one where I liked the colors. So I thought I'm just going to do what I have, which is uh, a light, which is fingering. So you need two balls. I'm, I, I hope I'm right. You need two balls. 
So I did get this gorgeous, well, here, let me show you it first so you get a good idea. Oh, just want to say, this is my beautiful new bag by Amy from Noble Character Crafts. She had a shop update a few weeks ago, and this is all vintage uh, fabric that she got. And oh, it's stunning. This is like a plush velvet almost. It's absolutely beautiful. I love it. And Amy's bags, if ever you get a chance to snag one, honestly, they have like little place for your stitch markers, a pocket, like they are really high quality and absolutely beautiful. Anyway, okay, so this is where I'm at. So I decided to do the top, the two colors I picked are this gray. Oh, and they also, she also gives you the choice to do short rows or not short rows. And I can't believe I'm actually saying this. I chose to do short rows. I chose to do short rows. There was a time when I wouldn't even do short rows. Like if it said it in a pattern, I freaked out. Um, and now here I am choosing, choosing that life. There we go. And I'm putting it with a very special skein of yarn, which I'll tell you, talk about in a minute. But look at that, isn't that? This is um, Sorella. I love Disney and she had a Disneyland collection. This was like a couple of years ago already. And this is Pirates of the Caribbean, which is one of my favorite rides. But look, I thought that looked really pretty together. Look, I even have my little Mickey progress keeper. <laughs> I'm all ready to go to Disney. Um, yeah, so those are the yarns. Let me just, wait, I didn't say the gray. The gray is full moon fibers in her sterling color. And it is superwash merino, 80%, 20% nylon in a fingering. It's gorgeous. It really, really is nice. And then, like I said, my Sorella is Pirates of the Caribbean. And this is 100% merino wool, which when I got it, I was like, I've got to remember not to do socks with that because <laughs> I'm pretty hard on my socks. I need nylon. And this it says classic sock. I don't know. I guess people do that with socks, but not 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 me. So, so that, so like I said, this is all I work on. Um, I started it on Tuesday and today is Friday. So I'm actually quite excited because I'm at the point now, I, I think I have 10 rows left and then I get to add in my first stripe of the color, which is always exciting, right? I don't know. It's going to be really pretty. So that's fun. All right, now I just, I have a few things to show you of mail items, not a lot. Um, I'll start with my Knit Crate. I do review Knit Crate um, yarns on Instagram and I try to knit with them and see how they are so I can report to you. Um, so far I've been super happy with their yarns. There was a, a, a little bit of an issue um, early on 2020 with shipping like a lot of things things were coming very late and people are getting a little bit upset um that's all been resolved i'm getting them every four weeks now no problems so the two that i haven't done anything with yet this is the land and sea collection you do get two full skeins and you also get four patterns you get a code that you can download the patterns this is land and sea and you do get an extra, I mean, they're nothing like to write home about, but I'm here for the yarn. Just a little needle. It's fine, I'll use it. Um, this is their the Dahlia. And it's in this gorgeous, it's almost like a blown, a blown yarn, blown out yarn, is that what they call it? Um, it's high, it's hundred percent Highland wool. It's extremely soft and it's called limestone. So I have two, 
do that. Um, just want to tell you what they come in. I mean, they, they're really nice size skeins. Yeah, this one is 328, uh, 328 yards. So it's just this white, which is gorgeous because I can put it with things. I don't know, it's a little thicker. So I'm thinking, you know, definitely winter, a cowl, hat. Maybe I can put it with something else and do a whole set. Lots of possibilities there. Very happy with that. And, and the next knit crate that came was, I did haven't taken it out of the wrapper yet. This is the Metropolis, Met oh, I'm like, see, I can't pretend I, I can see. Metropolis, ah, <laughs> she, she can read. Um, again, four patterns. And this, this blew me away. Look at this. Well, first of all, you get a little time to unwind cute uh, tape measure, which is amazing. Give me all the tape measures. I lose them. I need them everywhere. Awesome. But, oh boy, was this pretty. Look at this. Gorgeous. This is their worsted knitology collection. And you get four and it's a, sorry if you can't see that. It's a beautiful fade. Absolutely beautiful. I don't know what I'll do with this. Again, worsted, I'm thinking cowl, shawl even. Bring some another color in. But, oh, I love it. That was really, really special. Okay, we did knit crate. And just a little bit more. I did have a birthday <laughs> during during my time away. Um, you know, I like uh, spoiling myself. <laughs> you gotta spoil yourself because he's gonna do it. Um, so I went to the knitting loft in Toronto and I got for the first time some feisty fibers. I got it in dry martini and this is a DK but I just love this color. It's a little hard to tell. It is green. Oh, there we go. It's a little different, sh like it's just a, definitely a tonal green. So pretty. Um, thinking cardigan, that's what I'm thinking. But I was really pleased with those. And then I ordered online from Riverside Studio, this beautiful pink. And it's called Chantilly and it is, Oh, I didn't say what the feisty fiber was. So this is a uh, superwash merino, 75%, 25% nylon, 245 yards in each. And they're a Toronto dyer. So that's kind of cool. Um, again, another, she's from Quebec. This is Riverside Studio and it's a superwash merino sock yarn. And it is, 440 yards, so it's a fingering. And I don't know what to do. You can see that this one is much darker than this one, um, which I like. So now I just have to figure out what am I doing with that? Like, am I gonna alternate it? Am I gonna do like more like light and then dark? Cause I'm thinking a sweater, I don't know possibilities are endless but stuff like that excites me very much okay oh one other thing is just here i also ordered from oh my goodness um jenna rose she's a canadian bag maker and i got a bucket bag which i absolutely love so spoiled myself and that's it. Okay, so you've seen what I've made. Um, and that's about it. I mean, I will try to, you know, do more. At first I thought, well, who's going to want to like watch me when I don't have all the whips to show you. But I do have lots of FOs.
So maybe you will want to watch me. I don't know. Um, and we'll see. We'll see if I do this in two weeks or if I just do it monthly. Um, you know what? Let me know in the comments below. Um, first of all, let me know how you are because I, 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 I miss you guys. Let me know what you're working on, but also let me know what what interests you. Like, would two weeks? I mean, would two weeks interest you? I don't know. Or would just like a monthly roundup, 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 roundup of everything that I do and I make in the month and then what am I working on and what I bought? <laughs> would that interest you? Anyway, let me know. I hope you're all doing really well. Again, thank you to those who reached out to me. Um, just making sure I'm okay and saying that you missed the podcast because that's like honestly what really motivated me. Like, oh, I want to, I want to get back because all those sweet people are like. I just know how much I love podcasts, and there's certain podcasters like if they disappeared, I think I'd be devastated. <laughs> Not that you're devastated, but I'd be like, oh, I miss them so much. I mean, Instagram's amazing, but just chatting is is like a, a different experience I know anyway thank you so much please subscribe if you haven't already um, and if you have thank you thank you thank you and hopefully you'll see me soon take care bye-bye <laughs>